So when I'm advising companies on what kind of, on pricing and payment plans and how to think about monetization strategies, uh, again, asking them, hey, is this a big enough market that freemium will sort of work where a small percentage conversion of a large pool like will make sense for this to be a large company? And so you can just work the math backwards to make that work. Most of them have usually questions about pricing. Just like, what do I start charging this on? So the first comparison is like, do you have competitors charging for this? What do they charge? How does this sort of work? Um, if you are thinking about enterprise companies, the way we would usually do is try to figure out like, well, how much money is the company already spending on whatever it is to solve this problem? Usually, you're not solving a problem that nobody is working on. It's usually like some problem that already exists in the company and like you have a better way of doing it. And so the companies that will do poorly in enterprise is when there's no budget carved out for solving a specific problem. So if there's no budget carved out, it is like almost impossible to figure out how to generate money out of thin air. Like people can only spend money that is all allocated to them by the division, the company, whatever the finances are at, at hand. Then the next thing is you're just saying like, you know, how do you calculate how much money is spent on it? So you just start off with like, well, how many people is dedicated to the task? What is the average salary for those people? How much time is spent? And you can figure out there. And that's like your upper bound, right? And those people are already working on the problem. So you can't just charge that upper bound right to begin with because basically you're saying like, those people have a job and those people are probably going to have to be your champions. So you have to figure out some way. It's like this somehow eats a lot of their time. They want to do other parts of their job or what have you. And you figure out some in between on there. And usually I say like, Figure out some kind of smart guess and just start with your first customer. And for enterprise pricing, you can adjust. And depending on how fast they answer the question, you're going to move the price up or down. Um, the biggest thing is just start with some kind of model. One of the biggest mistakes I think some companies do is they start people off on free pilots. It's like, oh, just try you do the program. We won't charge you anything. We'll try it for 60 or 90 days, and we'll figure out where we go from there. And I think that's a poor way of thinking about stuff. Um, again, you don't set yourself up to figure out how to, one, map out the organization to figure out like, what is it gonna to take to actually close? You don't beta test your pricing. There's all these questions come near that you just are kicking the can down the road. And so what I usually advise is say like, look, we don't have free trials in our company. Like we can provide a service that is like of value. Here's what I can do for you. Um, we start off with a three month plan. It's gonna cost this much money. And if you are not satisfied with the product or service, 100% money back guarantee. But um, you know, and that way you can play this safe. But like that way you have gone through the actual process of like navigating enterprise pricing and, and payment and um, accounting and legal and all that stuff just to get to through that process. And if they're, say they're not even interested in that, then that means maybe that you don't have a product that people actually want to begin with. The other one is to think about incentives in terms of like your sales force and also in terms of people's reasons to buy. And the best, um, model I've ever heard about this actually came from Phil Libum from Evernote. And he actually talked about a concept that he learned from someone else. And it was about the pricing thermometer. And the idea is that there's three numbers associated with like pricing. And so you have like the cost of the product here, um, you have the price of the product, and then you have the value of the product. And those are three numbers associated a service or product. And it says that gap between the cost and the price of the product, that is considered that gap in distance is incentive to sell, right? So because it's like, oh, for every one of these I sell, I make that much money as a company. The gap between value to price, that is incentive to buy for the customer, right? And so where you put the price on the line controls where are the pressures for buying and selling, right? And so, for example, Evernote, they charge $30 a year, and they've never changed that pricing. And the idea is like we want all the energy around our software and service to be incentive to buy, right? Because like, wow, this product, all it sort of offers has high value to me. So it makes me want to buy. And there's enough people and enough pressure on there that makes it worth it. And what's amazing about that is if you can make that work, it grows by word of mouth and organically. Like they don't need a huge sales force to sell this because the value in itself automatically makes the sale sort of happen. Usually, a lot of people want to do is like figure out like how do I get the price as close to value as possible? And then what you do is you destroy one of those impulses for sort of people. And also, the feedback like loop that you generate for your salespeople is usually pretty broken. 
right? Because they'll do anything to sort of sell it. And, and, and the reason why people want to talk about it is completely different. It's like, yeah, it's going to be really expensive. You kind of get what you pay for, but I'm not super excited about it. And anyone that is willing to increase that gap in the other direction can undercut you as a result. And they undercut you not because like, oh, if this is better price, it's because better value, but also like now there's two pressures in there to make you want to like consume or upgrade or what have you.